Edith the Fair, also remembered as Edith Swanneck, was an 11th century Anglo-Scandinavian noblewoman who lived through one of the most turbulent periods in English history, witnessing the reigns of six English kings. Among those rulers was her lover, King Harold Godwinson, with whom she had six children, though they never formally married. Despite this, Edith's importance was never diminished. She was one of England's wealthiest nobles, and was renowned as the most beautiful woman in the realm, raised by her father Thorkel the Tall, a Viking chief and lord of the legendary Joms Vikings, a group of Viking mercenaries famed throughout Scandinavia. Edith grew up in a world marked by war and savagery, however she maintained a gentle nature, earning the epithet Swanneck, or Gentle Swan in Old English. This tenderness was profoundly demonstrated when, after the Battle of Hastings, she walked through the carnage of the battlefield to identify Harold's mutilated body, ensuring he received a proper burial. This is a tale of war, love, and unwavering loyalty. This is the story of Edith the Fair. Edith the Fair was born in the year 1025 in East Anglia. Her father was Thorkel the Tall, who at the time was the Jarl of the ancient kingdom and was ruling it on behalf of his king, Canute the Great. How Edith's mother and Thorkel the Tall met is an intriguing tale in its own right. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle goes into great detail regarding Thorkel's army, raiding, burning, and extorting much of England, especially the Yom's Viking occupation of the city of Canterbury. Thorkel eventually allied himself with the King of England at the time, named Ethelred the Unready, and married one of his daughters. Thorkel, however, would abandon Ethelred's service and would join Canute as Canute was his foster son, and the two were said to be cousins. Together, they took all the land after a series of climactic battles, marking the Viking conquest of England. Canute would in turn reward Thorkel with East Anglia, where the tale of Edith the Fair begins. Edith was born into a lineage that intertwined the might of Viking conquerors with the nobility of Anglo-Saxon royalty. I would like to thank PIA VPN for sponsoring today's video. PIA VPN is fantastic for keeping your internet browsing safe from anyone that might be snooping around. It will make your online activities private by safeguarding your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel, keeping your personal information secure from hackers, which is especially great when you're let's say connected to the Wi-Fi of a coffee shop. PIA has servers in over 91 countries and one of its many advantages is that it allows you to watch content from all streaming services, such as Netflix. Did you know that content that we gets restricted based on your geographical location? So by connecting to a different server, PIA is letting you watch those shows and movies from all over the world. For example, if you wanted to watch Jesters, The Game Changers, a 15th century Korean film about a troupe of jesters known for making fun of their unpopular king. You would only be able to watch this film in Korea. However, with PIA, it becomes accessible anywhere, and that's the same for all films exclusive to one place. PIA VPN comes with a kill switch, split tunneling, torrenting support, highly flexible settings, and so much more. The software is completely open source, and they don't record traffic or store any browsing data from their users, ever. So be sure to click the link in the description box below at www.piavpn.com forward slash history profiles to get 83% off private internet access. That's just $2.03 a month. And you also get an extra four months completely for free, giving you access to content worldwide and unlimited bandwidth you also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Her father, Thorkel the Tall, a Viking lord and formidable conqueror, was reputed to have noble blood, being the grandson of Harold Bluetooth through his father, Strut Harold. 
Edith's mother was a princess and daughter of King Ethered the Unready, which further enriched her impeccable heritage. Raised in the household of King Canute the Great, who was fostered by Thorkell, Edith may have also shared her childhood with Canute's son, Hartha Canute, the future king. With such prestigious Scandinavian and noble Saxon descent, and bolstered by her father's conquests, Edith grew to be one of the most powerful and wealthiest noblewomen in the land. The death of Canute the Great in the year 1035, followed by Thorkel's death in around the year 1039, marked the end of the major figures of the Viking invasion. Canute's son, Harold Harefoot, then took the English throne, reigning for five years before Hartha Canute ascended in the year 1040. Thus, Edith matured during the reign of Viking kings, as Canute established his bloodline on the English throne. This era transformed England into an Anglo-Scandinavian realm, and with her father celebrated as a legend and war hero, Edith's family enjoyed immense prestige. Her mother's Saxon heritage from the House of Wessex, and her upbringing in a culture enriched by both Saxon and Scandinavian influences, added to her distinguished status. Immense wealth surrounded her, and she was well versed in the tales and songs of her father's exploits, commemorated on runestones in Scandinavia and in sagas as well as the legendary bloodline of the Saxon kings of Wessex, narrated by her mother. Growing up in this Anglo-Scandinavian society, and possibly influenced by her father's pagan beliefs, Edith developed into a woman of great character. Her beauty earned her the epithet, Edith the Fair, and she no doubt enjoyed the respect her noble lineage afforded her. However, King Hartha Canute met an untimely end at the tender age of 24, poisoned at a wedding feast. Dying childless, his death marked the end of the reigns of Viking kings over England, and the throne returned to the Saxon line of the House of Wessex, with Edward the Confessor ascending in the year 1042. At this time, Edith would have been around 17 years old, witnessing the rise of the fourth king of her lifetime. The land was in transition, as the era of Viking kings had concluded, and the Scandinavian influence over England began to wane. King Edward the Confessor, weary of the powerful Scandinavian nobles in his court, expelled Edith's mother and brothers from England. Her brothers, once high-ranking lords, and loyal members of King Harthacanut's retinue, were forced into exile due to King Edward's fears, fueled by a menacing letter from King Magnus the Good of Norway, threatening invasion. Thus, Edith found herself alone in England, yet she remained a woman of immense wealth, inheriting vast estates in East Anglia. Despite the shifting tides of power, she was defined by her noble lineage, and navigated the turbulent landscape with grace and fortitude. Around the year 1043, Edith began a relationship with Harold Godwinson, the newly appointed Earl of East Anglia. Their union, known as Mor Dancio, or in the Danish manner, was a form of marriage not sanctioned by the church, but was widely accepted in England at the time. Given Edith's strong Scandinavian heritage, and Harold's Danish maternal lineage, this type of ceremony felt completely natural. The ritual, often held in a picturesque setting, involved the couple's hands being tied together with ribbons, a tradition known as hand fasting. Children born from such unions were considered legitimate. Harold likely entered the relationship, partly to secure support in his new earldom, as Edith owned much of the land in East Anglia. Edith, 
with her swan-like white neck, a mark of beauty among English noblewomen, was greatly admired. A wealthy aristocrat, she had her own personal goldsmith, and held lands and great manors in Essex and Cambridgeshire, along with dwellings in Canterbury. Her father was a legendary Viking warrior and hero, while her mother was a Saxon princess of the House of Wessex. Harold Godwinson was equally an excellent match for Edith. His father Godwin was the Earl of Wessex, and he was the richest man in the kingdom, having risen to prominence during the reign of the Viking kings. Earl Godwin wielded immense influence, reportedly holding more power than the king himself. Harold's mother, Githa Thorkelsdottir, was a Danish noblewoman, giving Harold Scandinavian blood as well. Both Harold and Edith came from extremely wealthy families with impeccable bloodlines, making their union a perfect match in the eyes of their contemporaries. In the year 1053, the death of Earl Godwin marked a significant turning point, as Harold succeeded him as the Earl of Wessex. This elevation made Harold the most powerful figure in England after the king, and consequently raised Edith's status as well. Harold's subsequent successful campaigns in Wales further solidified his dominance over the region. Edith, sharing in his triumphs, would have enjoyed the wealth and spoils of these victories. By the year 1065, Harold and Edith had shared two decades together, although their union was not recognised by the church. It afforded Harold the flexibility to take a second wife, if political necessity demanded. The couple had at least six children, four sons. There was Godwin, Edmund, Magnus and Ulf, and they had two daughters, Githa and Gunhild. Despite their long relationship and numerous offspring, the declining health of King Edward the Confessor created a political imperative for Harold to formalise a marriage to strengthen his position as England's foremost earl and potential king. Harold's new bride, named Ildgith, was the daughter of Elfgar, the Earl of Mercia, and she was renowned for her beauty. She was the widow of the King of all Wales, with whom she had a daughter. Harold's marriage to Ildgith not only secured the crucial support of the powerful earls of Northumbria and Mercia, but also weakened their alliances with the rulers of North Wales. Thus, Harold's power grew even more formidable. Though his new wife outranked Edith, the mother of his children, and his long-term companion. At the end of the year 1065, Edward the Confessor fell into a coma without clarifying his preference for the succession. He died on the 5th of January in the year 1066. He briefly regained consciousness and entrusted the kingdom to Harold's protection. When the Witten convened the next day, they selected Harold to succeed him as king, and his coronation followed on the 6th of January. Though Edith the Fair was Harold's loyal and loving partner, it was Eldgith who became the Queen of England. As the two were formally married in the eyes of the church, Harold's reign was soon beset by the need to defend his realm against both Harold Hardrada who sought the English crown for himself, and his own brother Tostig, who betrayed him and sided with Hardrada at Stamford Bridge. However, Edith's warrior lover, who was now the King of England, would somehow defeat the legendary Viking King Hardrada at Stamford Bridge, in a stunning surprise attack. The victory was short-lived, however, as a Norman force under William the Duke of Normandy was sailing across the Channel, and Harold Godwinson rushed south to repel the army. This would result in the Battle of Hastings, 
on October the 14th in the year 1066. At the time of the battle, Queen Eldgith was in London, but Edith Swanneck, Harold's long-term lover and the mother of his six children, remained close to him. Loyal and devoted, she followed him to battle, staying by his side until the end. As the battle raged on, she waited near the battlefield at Senlac Hill, alongside Harold's mother, Geetha. Edith's proximity to the battlefield demonstrated her profound trust in Harold and her unwavering attachment to him, despite the fact that his former wife, Eldgith, now ranked higher and held the title of Queen. Edith's commitment to Harold was remarkable. Even though her official status had been eclipsed by Eldgith, she remained steadfast. Her presence at the hill signified a deep emotional bond and a courage that defined the era's expectations for women. She was willing to face the dangers and uncertainties of war out of love and loyalty. The Battle of Hastings was a pivotal moment in English history. Despite Harold Godwinson's resounding victory over the legendary Harold Hardrada at Stamford Bridge, fortune did not favour him at Hastings. The Saxon army, valiant and resilient, fought fiercely and were on the cusp of victory. However, William, the Duke of Normandy, managed to turn the tide and secured victory. Harold, the last Anglo-Saxon King of England, met his end on that fateful day, slain by Norman knights. His death marked the end of the Anglo-Saxon rule and the beginning of the Norman conquest, leaving William the Conqueror as the new King of England. Edith's grief must have been immeasurable, Despite the chaos and carnage of the battlefield, she remained determined to find her fallen lover. The scenes around her would have been filled with horror, the ground littered with the bodies of slain soldiers, the air heavy with the scent of blood and the cries of the dying. Yet, driven by her unyielding love for Harold, she pressed on undeterred by the gruesome sights and sounds. According to tradition, Harold's mother, Geetha, made desperate pleas to William the Conqueror to surrender Harold's body for burial. Geetha offered Harold's weight in gold, a king's ransom, but the Norman army refused. In a final act of love and devotion, it was Edith the Fair who walked through the aftermath of the battle, determined to identify Harold's remains amidst the countless fallen. Edith's journey across the battlefield was a heart-wrenching endeavour. The early descriptions of Harold's death speak of a brutal end, his body mutilated beyond recognition. This is one account. The first night cleaving his breast through the shield with his point, drenched the earth with a gushing torrent of blood. The second knight smote off his head below the protection of the helmet, and the third knight pierced the inwards of his belly with his lance. The fourth knight hewed off his thigh and bore away the severed limb. The once proud king was reduced to a mere shadow of his former self, hacked to death in a manner so graphic it defies belief. Despite this, Edith's love and determination guided her. She sought out the unique markings on Harold's chest, possibly his Norse tattoos, which only she would recognise. Her intimate knowledge of these personal details allowed her to confirm the identity of her beloved amidst the sea of the dead. Edith Swanneck's determination ensured that Harold Godwinson, the last Anglo-Saxon King of England, received a proper burial 
This final act of devotion allowed her to perform one last service for her fallen lover, cementing her place in history. It was because of Edith the Fair's identification of the body that Harold was given a Christian burial by the monks at Waltham Abbey. Edith and Harold's sons fled to Ireland after the fall of their father, with most surviving into the 1080s, though the exact dates of their deaths remain shrouded in mystery. Their escape ensured the continuation of Harold's lineage, at least for a time. As for Edith Swanneck, history records no further trace of her after Harold's burial at Waltham Abbey. She vanishes from the annals, her fate left to speculation and legend. Her life had witnessed the reigns of six kings on the English throne, a turbulent period that saw the rise and fall of dynasties. Edith Swanneck's legacy is immortalised, not through grand monuments or extensive historical records, but through the timeless qualities of love and loyalty. She was never named Queen, and her tale offers a glimpse into the heart of a noblewoman whose love transcended the brutal realities of war and political strife. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another history profile.